All right, we got the bear on with us. He is Chris Felica from ESPN's College Game Day and the Behind the Bets podcast. You can follow him on Twitter, at Chris Felica. Bear, we'll jump right in. When are you coming down to Mississippi to check out our new sports book? Oh, I, I, I was very disappointed I didn't get the invite with uh, Danny Sheridan to come down there and do the, uh, do the grand opening. But yeah, <laughs> looking at the schedule, I'd love to be able to get down. If we, gosh, if we could uh, get either back down to Oxford or, or Starkville, we, we love both places when we got, finally got there for the first time and uh, would love to get on back. It's, and I know LSU isn't too far from uh, from Biloxi, so you you know making a trip over there for one day might not be too crazy. But yeah, Oxford is no, not far from Tunica at all. So I, no, I, that, I, 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 to keep keep that in the back of the, see that, that's a new uh, a new addition now when we have these college game day uh, road trips and if they get into town on Thursday night and and got, got nothing going on maybe uh, maybe I have to do a little pre pod after a little dinner and sneak out for a little late night. Uh, Little late night tour of some of the some of these uh, new sports books in some of these states that now allow uh, now now legal sports where you just kind of check it out. Now I I went down to the one at the Gold Strike in Tunica. So the grand opening was August first, and it's it's a lot smaller than a normal Vegas sports book, but you know for us down here that have not had it, you know here in Memphis, and, and the fact that there's nothing even close to it anywhere in the southeast. It's uh it's a pretty big deal. It's it's really nice, really well put together. They uh they've done a good job so far. I'm curious what the other sports books are going to do, but uh Gold Strike knocked on it first, so so we're we're all in with them right now. <laughs> good. Well, no, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, and that's that's important. A, they did a good job putting it together, and B, it's just going to be be curious to see what kind of prices they put up. It, it's funny. I was talking with uh, Brad Edwards the other day, and we we both kind of got a chuckle at uh, him growing up in Mississippi. Said uh, the, the great thing about those sports books is that that Ole Miss and Miss State fans certainly have no problem uh, getting angry and betting against their team. Kind of just like LSU fans have kind of no problem betting against their team. So I'd be curious to see what kind of numbers get up there. Probably get some pretty good two way action maybe on uh, on their in state teams. And you know, I was surprised because when you saw the the Jersey sports books and whatnot come out. Uh, the juice was a little bit high, right? And so at, down here, it, it has not been that crazy. There's still a lot of, uh, you know, minus 110s and whatnot. It's, it's been pretty, pretty standard. I was kind of surprised. Well, that, that, that's good. And I wonder if that had to do with uh, seeing some of the negative PR and some of the mistakes that some of these books uh, may – I mean, you, you can't be offering a 35-cent line in baseball. I mean, it, 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 it's just ridiculous, uh, some of the prices. But, hey. People are so starved nationally. If you don't live uh, in, in Las Vegas to be able to bet on things like this, that people are willing to. I, I just want to bet on my team and not really be able to shop and and look for a better price. So it's good to hear that uh, maybe the fact that they weren't the first means that they may have uh, done it a lot better than some of the the, the states that first rolled out. I agree, and and you know it's the only sports book that's open in Tunica right now over at Gold Strike. They're going to have Horseshoe, they're going to have uh, Sam's Town and whatnot, but. You know the fact that they were the first ones and, and the juice isn't crazy. It it plays well for uh, for the better. So uh, let's jump into college football week one. Game day is making their first trip to South Bend since 2012, and only the second visit since 05. Was there a concerted effort to get back to a campus location as opposed to you know one of the normal neutral site that we've seen in the past few years? Or yeah. did the schedule just work? I, I think the schedule just worked. I mean, I, I think the the most compelling game nationally is the Auburn-Washington game in Atlanta just because of Auburn playing their last two games in that building and losing. Uh, Washington kind of carrying the weight of the entire conference uh, on their shoulders with, with, with that game. But in, in any time you can be on campus for, a, uh, for, for the season opener, I, I think it works um, as opposed to being outside a pro stadium. It's a better atmosphere. 12, 12, it's a totally better atmosphere. It's a, it's a game that took the year off last year, and, and there's still a ton of juicy storylines, uh, both on and off the field with Michigan and Notre Dame. So uh, on campus, rivalry, Harbaugh, sign us up. <laughs> now, I, w- I want to talk about the spread for just a minute on that game. The opening line I saw over the summer at, at most sports books was, or anybody that had it early, was Notre Dame minus six, minus seven, somewhere around there. And now – it, across the board, Michigan is favored by three. It, is it normal for an opening line to move that much, or or has something happened that that I just don't know about? No, it, that was a that was a very interesting line move 
that um, uh, uh, Chris Andrews in, in South Point, I think, were the first to put up some of those games of the year. And it's funny. He had essentially Notre Dame favorite as a six, seven point favorite. And I looked at the RESP and FPI type numbers, and, and our numbers kind of had Notre Dame as right around a six point favorite or so. So, that, so his numbers and his power ratings. Uh, kind of kind of chive with what we had, but uh, I think at the time there was a lot of uncertainty with Notre Dame uh, in terms of uh, running back losing Josh Adams, lose two top ten offensive linemen against a really good defense, and just kind of the way Notre Dame's finished uh, finished last year, maybe a little sour taste in the mouth, and the fact that uh, I think people thought it was too big of a number and they saw value with. With Michigan, kind of the excitement about Shea Patterson getting eligible, everyone coming back on that defense, and I, I think they saw a little bit of an opportunity to, to get on six or six and a half or seven, uh, whatever it might be. And now the interesting thing will be any of those people holding uh, Michigan plus seven type numbers, will they in turn flip it around now and now play Notre Dame at plus three and kind of maybe try and catch themselves a little bit of a middle? I was curious if, if Shea Patterson had that much of an impact. Because uh, he was he was ruled eligible, what in June, I guess it was. Um, I, I thought maybe that might be it. You know, if the, but I, I I've just never seen a line move ten points that at least this early, especially not knowing yeah, that, what two teams are. That was a, That was a big one, and I think the Oklahoma Texas game was another game that moved a lot as well. I, I think OU might have been uh, a fourteen or a fifteen point favorite somewhere in that, in that range, and I think that got bet down to under a touchdown as well. I think a lot of people saw, saw that saw that number high, and and, and look, that was that was one when uh, Gil Alexander had me on behind the bench, and I saw that number, and we kind of went through some early season lines that kind of stood out, and, and I was away and got back, and I said, uh, I can guarantee you that this one is no longer uh, fourteen, because just look at what's happened the last few years; they've all been one score games, and Texas has had a real chance to win, so uh, that, that that I thought was a, a crazy number too. All right, now moving back to game day, let, let's talk about New York last year. What I didn't get a chance to talk to you afterwards, but what brought that on? It, you know, would you imagine you'll be doing more shows from non-game day locations in the future? Um, I, I think what brought it on a few years back, we had talked about potentially doing a show from New York because of just the, the sheer volume of college alums from Everyone in the country that I mean, you, you, Alabama, it doesn't matter Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Michigan, USC, Texas. You, you name it. You, you name a college grad, and so many of them live and have jobs in New York City and resi- and just spend their Saturdays watching college football at the numerous college landmark bars that, that each school has set up with their alumni association. And uh, we, we tried to do it a few years back, but uh, but I think we were just a little bit late in the planning. And then uh, we, we kind of looked at the off se- the schedule last off season and pinpointed a couple of weeks where it potentially could have worked, and uh, that was the weekend we came up with. And I, I thought the show turned out great. It was a really cool scene. Uh, it got a lot of po- a, a lot of buzz, both positive and negative, from people saying, "How could you be in New York City on a college football Saturday uh, with, with nothing going on?" But but I think it was a really it was really a bad unique week. scene. <laughs> It, it, it was. I, I think. I think Penn State Iowa was the game that uh, was the ABC primetime game that week that potentially could have been the best game to, to go for uh, if we wanted to do a show from site. But it was a really cool scene, and, and I think we're going to continue to look at potential different ways to to do the show. Whether it's from uh, another, whether we maybe one year we do it from Chicago, or maybe we do one show from Vegas, uh, or from that wherever. Uh, that that and might now be Vegas a uh, would be uh, interesting, especially right I, now with with sports betting being such a big topic. <laughs> I mean, that would be fantastic. <laughs> now, now we now we now we now we haven't thought about that, but maybe maybe one year we'll uh, the Pac-12 championship game will be at the new Raiders Stadium out there in, in Vegas, and maybe ESPN will have that Pac-12 title game, and maybe Game Day will take a trip. Uh, I, I can dream, right? <laughs> I get, just get you out there on their dime. That, that's not bad. <laughs> I can get down with it. Yeah, exactly. But, but even if it's not like a city like that, I think uh, some of our better shows are at places where either we've never been or haven't been in a long time. Like, like the show we did from Fargo a few years back was great. Uh, the first time we went to James Madison, and the second time for that matter, uh, was great. When we did Harvard, Yale, that was fantastic. Uh, it's a new experience for us on the show, and it's a new experience for fans. 
So uh, it kind of energizes everybody. It's seeing something that we haven't seen before. Uh, it's, it's kind of a cool experience. Now, you, you brought up looking at the schedule like in the future. Uh, and I've asked you this before, but I want to ask it again anyway, just so that we've got it again. Do you guys have a list of games already for the entire season that you're that you're watching closely that that you will possibly visit? Like I know things change every week, but but do you already have a list like from September all the way through November? Oh yeah, the, the, the first thing I do in January uh, once the regular season ends or the, or the championship game ends is I will uh, I will go start going through the the schedule for the following year and just kind of going through team by team and put together. Uh, potential uh, week by week games of note that uh, might wind up saying just so if there are some places that maybe we need to do a new site survey or a place we haven't been, uh, our operations team and our travel team can get on that. So yeah, I can literally tell you right now, like every week, uh, I have at least four or five games written down from uh, September eighth through the uh, through the end of the season. And September eighth is kind of a, a a good weekend too because you get USC Stanford. Uh, which is an intriguing game. Yeah, Clemson A&M, which is obviously with Jimbo and uh, Dabo there, uh, Chip Kelly going to Oklahoma, uh, and then Georgia-South Carolina, which could be potentially a, uh, a tricky game for the, for the Bulldogs in, uh, in Columbia. And then, yeah, we, I, I, I can go. Uh, you, you pick a date, and I can tell you uh, uh, <laughs> the, the biggest games of the week that week. I got you. Now, is, is there anywhere that you're really hoping to visit this year? Like that you've already what? looked at and you're thinking, all right, like we haven't been here in a while. I really want to get out there. Well, I, I'm really. I tweeted this out a few weeks back when I was starting to go through some season win totals and some, some, some just some working on some things. And I really can't wait for that Ohio State Penn State game on September 29th. I know what's gone on off the field is uh, a completely different story right now. But uh, Penn State at home with the winning streak they have there, having beaten Ohio State there a couple of years ago, kind of gave the game away in Columbus last year. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that atmosphere as well. If we're looking for somewhere where uh, we, we haven't been before or haven't been for a while, uh, I think that Stanford-Washington game could be really interesting on November 3rd. Uh, that, that could be a uh, a really cool scene, uh, depending on how things uh, shake down in the uh, ECC. Uh, Miami-Virginia Tech at Lane Stadium in mid to late November could, could be a really cool a cool scene. And another interesting, uh, a, another interesting uh, site which could be kind of cool is a uh, Notre Dame plays a game at Yankee Stadium this November uh, against Syracuse. So that bit might we we had a lot of fun going to, going to uh, Wrigley a few years back. So uh, that could be something maybe uh, potentially throw out there as well. Now, if, if both of those teams, of course, do well and whatnot, then you can at least make it uh, it justifiable, I guess. Uh, when's do you remember the last time that y'all were in Columbia, South Carolina? Oh gosh, I believe. Oh, let's see. I know we were there for a Tennessee game with Casey Clawson, and I know we were there for a. Uh, I know we were there for a Georgia game uh, where the Georgia came back late and won. I, I, you know what? I have my. Uh, I got my database pulled right up here because I was working on some show notes for the uh, for the South Bend show. So let's pull up all Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it was uh, wow! I, I would never have guessed. I guess it's such a memorable show. I forgot all about it. Uh, 2000, September 2014. We were there for a Missouri South Carolina game. Missouri wound up winning twenty one twenty. I remember unranked, that game. Un, un, yeah. unranked Missouri versus number thirteen South Carolina. That's right. That's right. Okay, and that was uh, that was close to the end of uh, of Spurrier's run there. Um, yeah, I figured that's you know week two. I'm guessing between uh, between Texas A and M and Clemson and Georgia South Carolina because of the way that South Carolina ended last year. You know, they're kind of on the upswing a little bit. Uh, they should be fully healthy in week two. I think that's going to be a monster game, just a monster it, game. Yeah, it, it, it is, especially with, with – look, I, I think the world of the recruiting job that Kirby Smart and the Georgia staff has done and the, the players that they brought in, but sometimes you wonder if losing two guys who are just a security blanket in the backfield with, with Chubb and Michelle – uh, you lose a guy like Roquan Smith on that defense. Yeah, maybe they might wind up being more talented this year. Ooh, who knows how the quarterback situation is going to play out. But uh, sometimes if, if you lose a lot of senior leadership and upperclassmen, uh, maybe early in the season you might be a little bit vulnerable. So uh, while I do think Georgia is more talented uh, than South Carolina, we, we've seen some games at williams Bryce in the past where 
uh, Georgia's gone in there with much better teams, and those games have been uh, a lot closer than anybody would have expected. All right, now you brought up the Ohio State Penn State game. How much of an impact? It, let Let's say Urban does not get fired. Let's say he's he serves a two game suspension. How much of an impact does that have on win totals, national title odds, Big Ten champion, just game lines in general? Does it have any impact at all? No, if it winds up being just hypothetically the situation throughout, if it winds up being a two game suspension, you're looking at what I think they play Oregon State and then somebody else week two, which is uh, irrelevant before they go to TCU. to uh, TCU to play by, to play in Arlington there. So I wouldn't think it would have any. If it winds up being now, it winds up being a four game suspension and maybe he misses TCU. And I can't remember if the Penn State game is the fourth game of the year well, for Penn them. Fifth. Or, it's the fifth. So maybe, maybe yeah. Coincidentally enough, so I mean, that could be. Maybe that might affect it. Maybe a half a game or so. Uh, it's funny. I think one of the bigger things that you can, in terms of betting, uh, I know at South Point they have that big prop out where you can take the the five Power Five conference teams uh, against the field, and Ohio State was one of those five. It's Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Washington, Oklahoma, the five teams versus everybody, and it's like minus three twenty or something like that, or minus three hundred. <laughs> you take those five teams versus the field, and, and, and I think maybe on something like that. Uh, maybe some betters would be uh, persuaded or could, could think there might be some, some value on taking the field because it would include Michigan State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State. Uh, that in, in theory, Ohio State would be a stronger team. But if it's just two games and if he's still the coach, uh, I, I don't think I don't think it's going to affect any of the the, the betting numbers uh, dramatically. But it, the thing is, as well, even if it does turn out where. Uh, he is ultimately fired over this. Talent-wise, they're still really, really good. And I, I wonder personally uh, how much the line would really move. I, mean, I think a lot of people would probably uh, knee-jerk, immediately jump on under 10.5 or whatever they reposted at. But, gosh, I, I don't know. I mean, M- Michigan still comes to Columbus. The TCU game is on the road, but it's a, a neutral site game, and I guarantee it will be a ton of Buckeye fans there. Uh, Michigan State is late in the year. I mean, they still have a really good coaching staff and a really talented team. So uh, I'll be curious to see ultimately how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. Well, it's, it, even if they even if they don't have Urban, they've still got Kevin Wilson on the offense. They've still got Greg Schiano on the defense. It's and everybody thinks the world of Ryan Day. So uh, yeah. let, let's talk about the uh, the playoff real quick. I, I know we got you super early right now. So everybody loves Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, so forth and so on. Who are other teams that are maybe outliers that people might need to pay attention to if they wanted to put a little bit of money just on on something that might hit? Who would who would you tell them to look at? On teams to reach the playoff, I, yeah, I think just, uh, just to reach the playoff. I think I think Washington is obviously a team that, uh, depending on what happens week one, they, they they could get there. I think even if they were to lose and it's a close game, if they were to run the table in the Pac-12 like they'll be favored to do. Uh, they they could get there. Notre Dame is a team uh, that could potentially reach the playoff based on how the committee has uh, treated Notre Dame the last couple of years. It, when Notre Dame has been ranked in the in the top twenty five of the committee, they've been viewed more favorably in the committee's top twenty five than say the AP poll. So so I think the fact the committee has a favorable view on them uh, with that schedule with Florida State, uh, Michigan. Uh, and a bunch of big games on that schedule. I think Notre Dame, I think they're like 8 or 9 to 1 maybe to make the playoff. Yeah, I, I thought I heard someone say that. That could potentially I be... Think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah, that, that, that could potentially be an interesting uh, prop. And, and Penn State, I, I think, is another team from the Big Ten. If you want to take a stand against Ohio State... Their and schedule view sets that, up beautifully, yep, doesn't it? <laughs> you, yep, you view that Ohio State-Penn State game in September as kind of a, a tiebreaker. Where if Penn State were to win, they would kind of have they would have to lose twice in order for Ohio State to go ahead of them. McSorley's back. I know they lose Saquon Barkley, but they really, really like Miles Sanders, and they've recruited great. Uh, they lose a bunch of guys on defense, which could potentially hurt. But like you said, Michigan State goes to State College. Uh, Wisconsin comes to State College. They have to go to Michigan. But of all of those games, it's probably the one you want to play on the road. Um, so I, I think Penn State could potentially be a uh, a little bit of a price play to maybe reach the playoff. 
All right, now I got two questions before we let you go. One, who is our group of five team that's going to make a New Year's Six bowl game? I think Boise State is far and away the best team from the group of five this year. Uh, you, you look at Rippin coming back. You look at Alexander Madison, the running back. Uh, everybody on the defense except for Leighton Grand Rush is back. Uh, how they played in the bowl game last year, and how they, actually how they played really late, because they were a little bit in a little bit of a transitional state uh, midway through the year. They got inconsistent play at quarterback. They were really beat up. It, it wasn't a gimme that they were even going to uh, reach the Mountain West Championship game, and, and they wound up getting their act together, playing great, uh, dominated Oregon in the bowl game, and, and they're going to start. They're going to have a big advantage over everybody in that they're going to start the year uh, ranked probably around fifteen or twenty or so. And uh, they have a big game at Oklahoma State early in the year. So if they were to win that game, then you're going to start to hear a little bit of a momentum. Maybe they run the table. They could get an actual playoff. I don't know if I'd quite go that far, but they'd have much more. They have a much stronger case than than, than UCF did last year. But I, I think Boise is far and away the best team in the group of five this year. That's, uh, that game in Stillwater is a, a massive game for them. So if they can... If they can sneak that one out, it's, even if they blew them out, if they blew out Oklahoma State, like that would make a little bit of playoff noise, possibly. I, I don't think it'll ever happen, but either way, uh, let's, let's talk a little gambling before I let you go. I love South Carolina over 7.5. I've got Florida Atlantic over 8.5, and, and LSU under 7.5 as far as win totals. Do you have any win totals that you absolutely love? I listened to, uh, to the Behind the Bets podcast. I, there's a bunch on there, so people need to go and listen to that one. But you got a couple of them that you can just tell me right here that you are in love with yeah. right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll share a couple of them that I that I shared on the podcast on, on the pod, and, and and I'm looking outside the Power Five for a lot of these because I, I thought by the time I was able to get to the numbers uh, that they weren't the best. Uh, Buffalo was a team from the Mid American Conference that I think uh, over six and a half I, I think is a really good bet. Uh, there's an excellent chance that they go over. I'm sorry that they go undefeated at home in all six of their home games, and they have a couple of of the weaker MAC teams on the road. They also have Rutgers from the Big Ten, and Rutgers is a team that they could potentially compete with because I think they're going to have some suspension issues. Uh, Buffalo got to six last year, and we didn't make a bowl. I think they get to seven this year and get bowl eligible again. Uh, Georgia Southern is a team that uh, was a complete mess last year. They they kind of strayed from. Uh, the program that had been built up and Willie Fritz and his assistants and uh, wanted to make a coaching change last year, bringing back uh, Willie for one of Willie Fritz's assistants midway through the year. They played much better as the year went on. Uh, their win total was five and a half, and, and they could, I think, easily go from uh, from two wins last year back up to six. Uh, if you're looking at an under, I think Central Michigan is a team that uh, they were benefited a lot from close games last year. I think they won four games or four and zero. Oh something like that in games decided by a, less than a touchdown. Uh, the schedule flips on them this year. Uh, somehow they, they beat Western Michigan and Ohio last year. We're really fortunate to do so. Uh, they, they really have Jonathan Ward, their running back, coming back, and nothing else. Uh, four and a half is their one total. I think uh, uh, this might finally be a year where Central Michigan misses out on a bowl game. I like it. I like it. All right, he is Chris Felica from ESPN's College Game Day and the Behind the Bets podcast. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Chris Felica Bear. We love you. Thank you for joining. Uh, hopefully, we can get you back during the season at some point when it's not so so busy. Absolutely. Look, uh, anytime you guys give me a shout, I'd be happy to uh, chat for a while. Uh, right. love, uh, love talking to you guys. All right, man. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.